What's going on, though, y'all? How y'all doing today? You know, NFT Talk every Tuesday and Thursday. Oh, awesome. All right, bet, bet, bet. How you doing, brother? What's going on? Man, I'm blessed, bossed up, and winning, man. What about yourself? Come on, man. You already know what time it is. You see me? Every time I'm doing better than the last. You know what I'm saying? Um, check this out, though, y'all. This is episode two. Uh, I'm very, very excited to have my boy with me, uh, Dr. Jamar Montgomery. Um, today, we're going to be talking about platforms that you can sell NFTs, such as Rare, Bull Open C, Axie Infinity, NBA Top Shop. Uh, we're also going to be talking about artists and musicians that have released NFTs. Um, Tory Lanez, Meek Mill's getting ready to drop one, right? Uh, and also things that you can sell as NFTs, right? So we're going to jump right into it, uh, talking platforms to sell NFTs. Um, I mentioned Rarible, OpenSea, uh, Axie, Infinity, uh, and NBA Top Shop. Um, as far as OpenSea goes, I feel like it's more of the, the beginner level, right? It's very, very user-friendly. I've used it. Um, it's very, very easy. It, if you have everything uh, set up, it might take you about five minutes yep. to, to upload you know, your NFT. So um, could, you, could you also you know, dive into uh, this OpenSea and Rarible and the differences and the benefits of, of each? Absolutely, man. So um, OpenSea, man, when we talk, like we're back to talking about NFTs. And for those that tuned in last time, NFTs stand for non-fungible tokens. And basically what it is, is just a way of, of putting your art, putting whatever media that you have on the blockchain. So one of the major platforms that we know about is OpenSea. And OpenSea is a platform that is based upon the Ethereum blockchain. So that means that your whatever NFT that you decide to upload, it is going to be known as an ERC721 token, and it's going to be uploaded onto the Ethereum blockchain. Another platform that's available uh, is Rarible, and that's another large platform. And the difference between Rarible and OpenSea is that Rarible is what we know as cross-chain, meaning that if I upload it onto Rarible, it's also on the Ethereum blockchain and it's also on the Tezos blockchain. So there we have, as we talked about last time, that there are different blockchains. And the advantage of that is that there might be a lot, there's a lot of millions of users on the Ethereum blockchain, and there's also mil millions of users on the Tezos blockchain. And some people don't necessarily use most blo blockchains, and particularly for people who are just beginning, they kind of just stick to one blockchain. Um, what Rarible does is allows for your NFT to be encoded so that it can be utilized on different blockchains, therefore expanding the use and also helping to save on some of the fees that it costs to mint and also sell your NFTs. That's awesome. Um, as far as X Infinity, I know we were talking previously, and I know it's got something to do with a video game. Am I? Am yes. I correct. Yeah. So X Infinity is a is a game that's based upon the blockchain, and uh, what they did is they created an entire marketplace so that you can buy their artifacts and whatever uh, skins and characters and things like that you'll be able to buy that for the particular game and that's loaded onto the blockchain. Wow. Also. And then um NBA Top Shop. Um is that I'm not too familiar with that one, so I'm gonna let you elaborate with that one. NBA Top Shot is just now the NBA's uh foray into uh in, into the blockchain and that's also I'm if I'm, if I'm correct, uh, is also on the Ethereum blockchain. And basically what they're doing is uh the NBA like the NFL has millions and millions and millions and millions of hours of tape uh, and highlight reels and just intellectual property for every player since the NBA has gotten started. And so this allows you, instead of now having collectible cards, you can now have collectible NFTs of your favorite players. That's, that's phenomenal. I'm, I'm actually, that's something I'm interested in. Um, as far as artists, right? Cause I'm an artist, you know what I'm saying? And I'm actually working on my, my NFT uh, album and my NFT for my actual, you know, paint. But uh, can we talk about, you know, artists, musicians specifically that are releasing NFTs and how this process even works? Well, you know, one of the, the artists that really came to mind uh, that I think that was really kind of 
I would say not necessarily spearheaded it, but he was the first artist that I really heard about, hey, we're going to utilize this plat, we're going to utilize NFTs to release an album. And it was uh, Tory Lanez. Mm -hmm. And Tory Lanez sold a million copies of his album for a dollar. Um, and as a result, after it was being sold and resold on the market, uh, he still receives royalties for, for that. Um, another one is uh, the, the Wu-Tang album, where they only made one copy. Uh, and they're now creating that as an NFT as well so that they can open up the access to everyone else. Uh, when Wu-Tang first uh, put that album out, uh, it was a one of one. And uh, the far who we know as Farmer Bro, Martin Shkreli, he bought it and wasn't releasing it. And so now mm -hmm. somebody else has bought it and now are creating uh, an NFT so that it can people can have access to it. Um, Meek Mill just released that he okay. was going to uh, uh, be putting out his album as an NFT, he said, you, you're going to need a wallet in order to even hear it, which is good because it helps with crypto adoption. Agree. And I mean, um, do you know, can you talk a little bit about the process of uploading uh, your music, though, as an NFT? Because a lot of people don't really understand it. It's not as, I feel like, as simple as the picture. Um, but if there's anything you anything we could we could share with, with the people in case we have some artists on here. Well, oftentimes, uh, a lot of times artists, they will, I would say that Rarible is probably an easier way, one of the easier platforms if you want to upload music, okay. if you want to upload something that's different than a JPEG or a picture or something like that, Rarible is probably a, a, a better option for it. Uh, it's not necessarily too difficult. I would say that once you get on the platform uh, and follow the instructions on the platform, they're pretty self-explanatory. What's making sure that is you have enough money in order to mint it, which means uploading it onto the blockchain so that it's now encoded as a token. Okay, that's awesome, man. I mean, uh, for you artists out there that are trying to release uh, your music as NFTs, look, uh, as, as we just said, Rarible is an easier way, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it's out there. It's, it's opportunities. You literally just got to kind of dive in, do your research and really understand this. So um, it's the future when we living in it. Right. So yep. things that you can sell uh, as NFTs was the next topic. And um, that's absolutely anything, bro. You know what I'm saying? You can sell art. You can sell music. You can sell film. You can sell collector's cards. You can sell real estate. Like you can sell damn near anything. Um, I, I want to talk about some, I guess, some artists that are some painters and some dope, uh, you know, contemporary artists that have been putting out some NFTs. Um, I got a friend uh, named Zevi G uh, who just, uh, he's dropping the four, five, six collectors club. Uh, I think it's later this month. You know what I'm saying? So he's doing his thing. Um, he sold out on the pre-sale. He had his, uh, whole, his NFT on Times Square, right in, uh, or right in Times Square on, on the billboard. That was dope. Uh, you got John Born. Um, He's got the Goat Gods coming out. Uh, they come out two, two twenty two twenty two, right? So those are, uh, I think it's gonna be two thousand two hundred and twenty two Goat Gods, and he's teamed up with all different types of people. Um, I mean, I'm he, he's teamed up with uh, Art from the Heart, right? We've got five of them for our five year anniversary, uh, which is this year, right? Uh, he's teamed up with uh, you got Mad King on there. I seen Jigga What. I've seen a, a lot, a lot of dope artists that'll be on there. So make sure y'all are staying tuned for that and, and follow that Discord, follow at John Bourne. Um, and there's just a bunch of dope. Oh, my boy, my boy, Brian Mills. He just dropped uh, 777, I think, uh, of his Macell, uh NFTs. And, you know, those are pretty dope. You know what I'm saying? And they're affordable, right? So go cop up on those. Um, and these are all going to raise in value because these artists are doing their thing in real life. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, as far as music goes, we talked about Meek and, uh, and Tori, but has any films been done as, uh, as an NFT? Yeah, I know it's possible, but has anyone ever, has it come out yet? You know, I'm sure that they have. I have to do a little bit more research. I know that, uh, Quentin Tarantino was trying to release, um, some of his manuscripts from Pulp Fiction, um, and the movie studio stopped him from being able to do that. Mm, and so I'm sure they don't have nothing in the contracts about that, but you know they can. Well, you know, intellectual property is intellectual property, and if 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 they're able to to stop you, uh, I know that um, Dame Dash 
we forgot about Dame Dash. Dame Dash was uh, was selling his rights uh, to what was it? Jay Z's Reasonable Doubt. Mm -hmm. um, he was selling that as an NFT. So, uh, but back to film. Uh, yeah, we can do some research. Let's see film NFTs. Let's see anybody who's doing film. I mean, I'm on a computer right now. If anybody in the chat knows, um, if anybody in the chat knows, definitely put it in there. Um, as far as We'll take questions at the end. So if y'all have any questions, please, please keep putting them in the chat and we'll scroll back up and, and try to get, get, get to as many as possible. But make sure y'all are, you know, putting y'all questions in the chat in the chat and we'll make sure we are answering them. Also, we need you guys to keep uh, sharing this, all right? So share this live. Make sure you are sending it to everybody you know. Uh, this information is important, right? We are for the culture and we are going to keep delivering this information. As much as we know, we're going to, you know, spread and share with y'all, but we need y'all to, you know, do the due diligence and, and share that. So, um, collector's cards, also, also a very, very great, uh, NFT that you can possibly purchase or when I feel like the Pokemon ones go crazy. Am yeah, I they do. They do. Um, uh, all because of the culture that's, that's all behind it. Um, mm -hmm. that's behind Pokemon and Pokemon go. Um, and people are already familiar with having a Pokemon card and seeing how Pokemon cards have, I mean, those, I would say that those were some of the original NFTs, right? You'd only have a limited edition of particular Pokemon cards and find out that one of those cards might be worth five, $6,000 just because of its rarity. So that's, that, that's an example. I mean, I have my own NFTs and uh, I was teaching political science. And so what I did is, uh, every time that you buy my NFT, you get access to my political science course. So, That's uh, smart, bro. yeah, when, man. When did, when did you when did you start with that? Uh, November twenty twenty November twenty twenty one. Oh yeah, you on you on. All right, so that was around the time of the um. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. All black national. All black uh, national. Shout out to Doctor Boyce, man, because without him, we probably wouldn't be here right we now. We wouldn't. Need we wouldn't even be connected without Dr. You know Boyce. So shout out Dr. 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 Boyce because uh, this is, uh, you know, this is important. Like I said, we met at the All Black National Convention and we felt that uh, this information needed to be spread. We did a panel together there. Uh, the synergy was there. And I think, you know, now moving forward, we're going to keep getting this information to y'all. Um, but lastly, uh, before we, we wrap up, I wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, real estate, right? Like there's people really selling and buying real estate on in the metaverse um to can you elaborate to like you know some of what's going on and and how do you even get involved and how do you make your money back on real estate that's not real per se beautiful beautiful so i mean sandbox is one of the major ones decentraland is another one um and what it allows you is access to their particular platform you buy land on their particular platform and there are concerts that are being held on these platforms uh one of the famous examples that i like using is what happened with uh what's that game what's, what's that game um travis scott did a concert did, did Fort, an entire Fortnite. concert with huh? Fortnite. Fortnite. Fortnite, right yeah. Fortnite. Now imagine that Travis Scott concert now being had in the sandbox and you're able to have access to that particular concert, right? Uh, right. Another, another one is Super World. Super World, what they're doing is they're taking real life real estate and putting it on the blockchain as an NFT so that you can buy that land. Um, I think that is, you know, I'll put it like this. There's money to be made and there's opportunities there. When it comes to actual real estate, I think one of the, the best, best use case of it is having that as a public registry. So the okay. same way in which you go down to the Hall of Records in order to put your deed for your for your house, that you should actually have that deed as an NFT. So that makes it much easier to be able to be transferred. I got I got to get on it, man. I, I've been, um, you know, I've been I've been on I've been trying to be on my game, you know, what I'm saying pioneering, but. It's a lot. It's still a lot more to learn. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's one thing. Excuse me. That's one thing that I really, really uh, that interests me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. just in, in the whole metaverse and how you can how how the world will be in a hundred years, bro. Yeah. Like what what's what's really going to be going on? Like you know what I'm saying? Like you're not even going to drive no more. You just going to hop in your, you know what I'm saying? Your uh your metaverse type will. You know what I'm saying? Or your your virtual reality car. 
and it really take you somewhere you really able to I, I i really don't know you know there's so many possibilities so um you know that that pretty much wraps up everything we wanted to kind of go over today um but i've I seen a few questions in the chat i'm gonna run it back up um and see real quick um i think somebody asked uh how much does it cost to mint an album or to how much does it cost yeah how much does it cost in to make an album in nfts what can you tell me how much does an album cost oh can you tell me how much an album costs in nfts um i'll answer it i don't i think when you mint it um if you're talking about i'm gonna give you both if you're trying to mint it um it's probably gonna be some some very cheap right it's not, never really too expensive uh as far as trying to get an nft up um as far as like uh as far as when you're buying one it just depends on what the artist is selling it for but typically like we were stating earlier they're selling them in ethereum or uh in different different type of you know uh coins so you definitely got to be up on your you got to have a wallet yep. straight up, you know what i'm saying um and with that being said, you know what I'm saying? Is there anything else that you want to leave the people with, bro, before we come back Tuesday? Go do your research. Just go do your research. Just find out what NFTs are and, and, and research and find. Uh, you might find that your favorite artist is, is looking into uh, releasing NFTs. Uh, I'm currently working with a particular artist, uh, an artist that uh, um, I won't release their name just yet. Uh, but I'm doing a lot of the blockchain education for her fan base uh, okay. so that they can understand NFTs because she's going to be releasing NFTs very soon. Let's get it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for, for the news and I'm excited for you, bro. That's that's fire. Um, one other question, I guess, before we leave, Daniel Spencer said, what is an NFT? Uh, NFT is a non fungible token. If you want the definition, uh, make sure you go back to episode one check it out we we went through it we elaborated on it um but yeah man every tuesday every thursday um uh, nft talk podcast please follow at nft talk podcast when we get a thousand followers we'll start going live from the nft talk page um nft talk podcast as i said before make sure y'all follow follow my boy uh dr jamar montgomery follow me uh and you know keep keep this job moving keep spreading this information send it around if uh if you know you know somebody that needs this information or that's been asking about it, please keep spreading this video. Send it, send it, and send it, and send it. Uh, we'll be back soon. Peace and love.